Well, well, well. So it looks like the uh, pieces of melon that we added to the worm tower as a little housewarming for the worms has gone down a treat. Hello again and welcome to the April update of the Worm Tower. So it's been about four weeks since we last had a look at this. Now in the meantime I have been giving the bin very small amounts of food and I'm just checking here that the food where I fed it is all gone. I love this. When you feed the worm bins melon, uh, the worms eat everything except the very outer skin. I don't know why, it just fascinates me that uh, this is what you have left of a, a piece of melon. So. Anyhow, uh, yes, you remember we started this with cardboard and leaves and a very small amount of uh, vermicompost that the worms were in and a very small number of worms. And you can see that the casts are starting to build up there. The worms are not plentiful, but they are spread throughout the bin, which is always a good sign. It means they're uh, working their way. They're, they're, it means there's no... Uh, part of the bin that they're avoiding for whatever reason which is good because this bin is too small really if if it was the case they were starting to avoid somewhere they'd probably bail um if you ever find little uh, circular quite clear almost jelly um eggs like this in your bin they're not cocoons they're snail or slug eggs so you want to get rid of them there's pieces of eggshell remember we're doing a tea bag and eggshell watch uh, just so that at the end of the year we'll see uh, um, what if any difference there is to the eggs to the, to the crushed eggs and to the uh, tea bags that we added so you can see the worms are quite lively they're looking quite well I don't have any concerns at this point in time, which is really good because if you consider we started as a juvenile and that's an adult, uh, a juvenile in my hand, an adult on the leaf, the clitellum is how you can tell the difference. So there's quite young there, so it means that the, the numbers have probably increased a small amount. We've probably had some cocoons hatching. And as I was saying, it's all good because we started this bin in February, uh, just before we had horrific uh, low temperatures which is about the worst thing really for a small little bin like this that lives outside with almost no protection um, and the worms have survived and they've they've done very well so I'm just adding some ground up eggshells there for grit and it also particularly when you've added a lot of leaves it will stop the uh, population of pot worms uh, getting out of control there is some pot worms in there but very few and they're great little composters so I don't have a problem with them so this is what I'm feeding now this is about twice what I've been feeding it up to this point in time so because they've been handling the small amounts of food well I'm going to double the amount I'm adding at a time and see how that goes but it's a very easy mistake to make with a small bin like this with very few worms in it um, it's overfeeding and if the environment becomes uncomfortable for the worms and they don't like it they haven't really got anywhere to go in a small little bin like this except out in a big bin it's really not an issue at all now i'm just adding a small amount of uh, horse manure there just uh, as a little treat but you'll see i'm keeping it to one side because again if the worms are not happy with that it's such a small amount they will be able to keep away from there if they don't like it but i'm just going to be curious to see if they're going to um if I'm going to find worms on that side in a week or two. Now let's have a look at the sump. And that doesn't look bad at all. That's really almost ideal. I don't want a lot of excess moisture coming out of the bin because it means the bin is too wet. So what I've got there is almost perfect and there's about a dozen worms in the sump. That's actually probably about the best I've ever seen the sump in this uh, worm tower in terms of um, numbers of worms getting down into the sump so there was only about 12 or so worms there so i'm just going to put them back into the bin and if i can keep the moisture level like that i'll be very happy but i doubt that's going to be the case as the year goes on so just adding another little bit of uh, ground up eggshells for grit remember eggshells ground up eggshells does three things really it'll add um, calcium to your finished product which is a good thing it'll keep the bin from becoming acidic keeps it more alkaline and uh, it, the worms love it for grit in fact they need it they need something for grit 
to break down the food so that's really all that's happening there let's have a quick look at the big bin now this is it's showing 18 degrees there i'm not sure how accurate that thermometer is really but that's not bad um, and that's a that's a very comfortable temperature for the worms this bin uh, i just put a very thick layer of leaves over it um, for the winter and just left it i, I put about two 35 litre which is 70 litres in total of food in, covered it with leaves and just left it. And I haven't really done anything to this bin at all. This is a kind of best of luck to you make bin. Um, I don't really do anything to it. I just keep adding food. I've never turned it. I've, um, I've never done anything to it. I leave, just leave the worms to get on with it. And as you can see there, they're um, doing extraordinarily well. It does make you wonder if we spoil our worms because, you know, this bin is... It, it would be classed as neglected other than the fact that I supply it with food i don't do anything else to it and as you can see there there's just masses and masses of worms the other thing because this is a big bin everything goes in here so leeks onions citrus fruits all the stuff you shouldn't add to a worm bin i tend to put to the back so what happened that's a sample from the back there now and you can see it's heaving with worms, absolutely heaving with worms. But because I, it's big enough, the, the worms are able to stay away from it until um, anything acidic has broken down and they're able to move in then and feed. There's uh, a couple of little pot worms there, but not many. We saw, we saw one of our best friends in the worm bin, the isopod. I'm just doing little samples in different spots of the bin just to make sure there's worms everywhere throughout the bin. And there is the other thing is because there's a lot of leaves uh, in this mix uh, oxygenation uh, is not a problem so there's plenty of air getting through that combined with the fact that the worms are working up and down and sideways all across the bin it keeps plenty of air moving in that's a bit of rubbish it's probably from one of the bags of leaves i dumped in because i collected them off the council <laughs> If you remember, the council sweep up the leaves of a night and leave them to be collected in the morning, and I go around in the car at night and pick up the bags of leaves. So it's very kind of the council to do that for me. But yeah, because of this the structure, you can see there with the leaves, um, there's plenty of air in in that bin, and the moisture level seems to be spot on, really. Now this is a stump of cabbage and you can see why isopods are so good in the bin. That's, you know what stumps of cabbage are like, it's rock solid, but have a look in there. There's three or four isopods eating away and breaking it down. They're very happy. See if I can get a better focus of it there. There you go. So they've tunneled their way into that and over a period of time they will break this down uh, then the, in such a manner that the, the worms will be able to then process it. So this will be processed by the isopods, reprocessed by the worms, and it'll end up looking like this, which is lovely, friable, loose vermicompost. So I'm quite pleased with how this bin is doing, really. Piece of eggshell there. Now, um, heaven knows how long that eggshell is in there, but uh, it does just goes to show crushing up eggshells really doesn't do anything you've got to break them down and of course what have we here oh yes the tea bag and again that tea bag will have been in there for some considerable time i think these companies have a nerve actually saying that uh, their tea bags are compostable i'm sure some are but they're probably more expensive ones but the cheap supermarket tea bags they all claim to be compostable um i don't know whether they're talking about human time or geological time because years and years after um, putting tea bags in, in, into compost, I, I find the tea bag. Or whether they're talking about composting with a flamethrower, I don't know. But it's, they're not, definitely not talking about adding the tea bag to a worm bin. So th that's it. Uh, just a short and sweet update, really. Not a whole lot happening with the tower other than it's uh, doing well. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next update soon. Bye for now.